Well, hello everyone. I am Brian and today is Saturday, April 30th, 2022. And this is episode 95 of the Lots Project podcast. And it is titled Coffee with Brian. And today we are featuring Matt DeRocher of Farm Hop Life. Um, yeah, weekly Saturday morning uh, interview show. We kind of target hour, an hour and a half. So uh, really excited to talk to Matt this morning as we are kind of on a similar path. Uh, he and his family, we will talk about this, but, uh, yeah, they want to go farm hopping and, uh, and helping some people out. So we're going to talk about his background, what kind of got him into, uh, this idea and, uh, yeah, where they're going from here. So excited to talk about that. Uh, after the show, I got a ton to do this weekend, guys. I, uh, I gotta make some edits to our online shop. I'm adding a few uh, coffee packages. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I'm hoping to get it done this weekend, and uh, yeah, I'll blast it out there when I get it done. Uh, I got uh, I gotta get that newsletter done that I totally spaced on. Didn't have it on my calendar. It was supposed to go out a few days ago. Uh, that is now on my calendar to get done by the end of the weekend, and I have multiple reminders to get next month's done on time. So I'm not a slacking jerk. Oh, yeah. And then after that, I got to dig comfrey tomorrow. We are getting a ton of rain today, but I think we'll still be all right. I think there'll be enough time and uh, be able to get out there and dig it and get it get it on its way for everyone that has ordered so far. I apologize for the wait, but, you know, you got to deal with Mother Nature. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how she goes. And uh, big, exciting news. Yesterday, we finally were able to uh, get the slides out on the camper. We are getting that uh getting that uh, kind of fixed up our little projects we need to do before we want to move in and get on the road again. Uh, we were able to uh, get it open and uh, yeah, walk through. So I think after this video, I'm uh, going to head out and do a walkthrough, kind of show what we have, uh, what we've done so far and uh, yeah, what we got to do before we move in. And uh, yeah, just kind of a base layer heading into the spring after we shut her down for the winter we've had it closed for six months and uh yeah didn't look bad when we opened it up but uh yeah a little walk around and uh and just a touch base and i should be able to release that video sometime this afternoon this evening or uh yeah by the end of the weekend hopefully um yeah so look for that um uh, yeah other than that um yeah prepping the house to uh, get that sold and listed and yeah Good morning, Martinson family. Thanks for joining us this morning. If you are over on Float, um, I do not have that chat open. I was uh, pulling it up on my phone, and for some reason, it wasn't auto-refreshing. So, um, yeah, if you want to uh, get your chat or any questions for Matt or myself during the show, and you're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, uh, those come directly to me. If you're over on Float, I will not be able to see it Um so, uh, hold on here. My notes kind of covered up my screen. Yeah, with that, I am excited to bring on uh, uh, Matt from uh, Farm Hop Life. And uh, hey, Matt, how's it going? Welcome to Coffee with Brian. Thanks, Brian. It's good to be here. I uh, Just to kick off right away, I first heard you on Toolman Tim's show. And after I, uh, after I listened to that, I got so excited. I like, texted my wife like a uh, link. Like, you got to listen to this guy. He's me. He's doing what we want to do. And so I was like super excited about. Uh, yeah, that, that's cool. Like I started following you on, I think float was the first place I saw you. And um, cause I was doing that uh, fire hose thing uh, where you see all, and I was like, farm hop and it took me a while to put it together i was following you before i actually realized what the name meant and kind of what you were going with and uh following your posts watching the pictures and all of a sudden it all clicked and i was like huh i should reach out <laughs> to this dude and talk to him because we're kind of the same people we're on the yeah same it's group, kind of but... spooky <laughs> but anyway uh people uh in my audience might not know you um can you introduce yourself and kind of give a little bit of a background of uh of where you've been, where you're going, uh, and kind of come up to what you got going on with Farm Hop Life. We'll uh, cut her off there, and we'll, then we'll get into uh, into what about what Farm Hop Life is. Yeah, sure. So uh, I am a Minnesota native. Uh, since 15 years old, I've bounced around from job to job. I barely graduated from a private high school. Uh, <laughs> dropped out of college twice. Uh, and I, I ended up woofing to Montana just to, for like a reset. That was for like six weeks. 
uh, went back. Is to that Minnesota. is that working? Is that the working on organic farm? Is that, mm-hmm. is that what you're talking about? How'd you yep, like yep. it? It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was hard work. I mean, it's Montana, and I started like November first, and so ah. <laughs> uh, it, like sixty mile an hour winds were like a norm there, and uh, so. Yeah, was, when we came, I mean, we came back from Squatch Fest, we went out, uh, the trip out and back was there the end of October in the beginning of November, and with the camper on those uh, two-lane roads out in Montana, holy shit, the wind was bad. <laughs> Corey, yeah. like, the one day, her knuckles were just, like, sore from holding the steering wheel. It was, yeah, it was crazy, so I can only imagine working in it every day out there. Right, yeah, I bet uh, if you're driving back, uh going like through Livingston or whatever, like it'll, uh, I bet that's like that little, it's like a wind tunnel there. Anytime we're, <laughs> we're coming in and out of Yellowstone, like this, this 20 miles of road kind of sucks no matter what you're driving. <laughs> well, we wanted, a truck a scenic, we wanted to take the, like the scenic, more scenic route. So we were kind of, sure. we weren't on a major highway and we were hopping from BLM land to BLM land. So we're on these two lanes coming up over the ridges and in the, in the, in the valleys. And it's like, as soon as you came past that peak, it was like, woo, woo. <laughs> and then you went behind yeah. another, another structure or something. And it just like calmed down and just, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. I felt bad for her. I'm like sitting in the passenger seat going, you need me to take over? She's like, no, no. <laughs> She's our driver. Yeah, put some hair she on loves your driving. She can't, she can't ride. So like, I got it easy. I just sit in the passenger seat and dick around on my phone and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So uh, but anyway, so you're woofing out in Montana and then, uh, then kind of how did things go? So I moved back cause I, you know, it's not paid or whatever. And I ran out of money. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I moved back. I got into construction as a carpenter. And then in 2016, um, my now wife and I moved out to uh, Montana. And, at, you know, there was like um, the year we moved here, there was uh, we had a deal with um, some cancer of hers that showed up, you know, like uh, got a new job, got to get new health insurance. So then you got to have like, you know, your standard physical or whatever. And so had like the whole camp, like, thankfully it was like you, surgical. You found, out through, you found out through like a pre-skiing physical for uh, health insurance? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like, hey, just to get established. And so like, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Like when you have to go do those things, um, you know, oh, I don't want to take a physical, but like, oh, it's required. And like, sometimes... Yeah. it's worth it so <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's crazy that's uh probably thankful for that and yeah uh, and able, to, able to catch it when you did because yeah that kind of stuff festers and doesn't turn out well yeah to catch it and get it removed with surgery uh instead of doing any chemo or any of that junk is nice. super super great and so so yeah if we hadn't moved to montana it we might not have caught it at all because it's very aggressive form right. and Thankfully, uh, with that surgery, we're, we we're still allowed to have children. And so like our, our first son, Milo, like even her like OB and um, her oncologist were like, oh, the little miracle baby's here. <laughs> so like, uh, so then after, after being in Montana for a year, uh, I got into an electrical apprenticeship and that's what I'm doing now. But after five years, I'm dropping the apprenticeship to pursue just better life worth living and helping others while traveling with my family. So you got to be close, don't you? Five years. Uh, so <laughs> it's four years or 8,000 hours plus right. work. So the coursework is what's killing me. Uh, even, even in um, one of my technical colleges, that I went to, I went for electric, uh, electronics, not electrical, but there's enough of an overlap where I got like 12 of the 14 books just like checked off. Like, Hey, you don't like, <laughs> and I still like, and I'm still not getting it. Like, dude, if you ever had to try to read, uh, like the, the code book, the national electric code. Oh yeah. It's awful. It is so terrible. It's the worst book. Yeah, one of my one of my uh, maintenance jobs I had actually had you 
uh, register as a unlicensed registered electrician. And then they had journeymen and masters on staff. So you were accumulating work hours just by coming to work and, uh, they would run you. That was one of the benefits of the job as after that many hours, uh, they would actually pay you to do the coursework and get your journeyman. Cause then they could hire more non registered right. or non licensed registered. And so I did that for a while. It was a horrible job. So I, I left, but that was, that was, that would have been a nice, uh, nice perk of that was just gaining all that apprenticeship and, uh, and grabbing that, uh, journeyman's before I took off. But yeah, that was, it was supposed to be like four, yeah, four or five years of uh, 40 hour a week. And I was just like, nah, it's not worth it. <laughs> I'll figure yeah. it out somewhere else. Yeah. It's, I, what I've come to realize is like trying to read the code book because you need to re up every two years, even after you get your journeyman's, you have to do like renewed education, whatever. Um, I, my comprehension in that book absolutely sucks. And so I, it's like, um, it'd be like, Hey, I can play music. Like, you know, I can play the piano. I've got an okay rhythm. I know the keys. I can't read music though. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> if you can't read right. music as a pianist, right. you're kind of screwed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Unless you're making it up on the fly or doing it by ear, yeah, you kind of you're kind of messed up. Um, yeah, I I have enough of that electrical knowledge, though. Yeah, to to be dangerous, like to do what I need to do. I I rewired two mm -hmm. rooms of the house and and did all my solar system and everything on the campers. So it's that experience is there and knowing the practical the practical hands on skills is super valuable. And you know, you get into a situation where codes don't matter, then you're you're pretty freaking valuable as a carpenter and an electrician. So I think so. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's hard skills. Like right now, I'm kind of. I'm sitting on that and uh, really thankful that I've had all the different jobs I've had in the different industries of the hard skills and then add on the homesteading stuff. Cause it really, yeah, it kind of brings you a value in situations where, you know, stuff goes sideways and you got to make some money. I, I did an episode on resumes. Uh, my, my resume earlier this week, I think. I listened and, to that. Uh, yeah. I forgot a bunch of stuff. Like I couldn't believe I forgot all the times that like I got laid off or fired or whatever was in between work and I would go to Craigslist and just do whatever. Like people mm -hmm. want to, people Been want there. you to do shit for them. Like tool man, Tim's made a, made a, made a whole business out of that handyman doing stuff that people don't want to do. Um, and that's, that was my go-to when I would, when I would get laid off, it was like, go to Craigslist, put an ad, uh, looking to do, looking to do household chores, handyman work, whatever for cash. And I collect my own, oh no, don't say that. I would never collect my unemployment and work for cash under the table. It was not something I would ever do, think of, or, <laughs> um, but yeah, you like go help or me recommend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't do not cheat the unemployment system. Um, I haven't been on it in quite a while. So I think statute of limitations is up. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, so. uh, let's get back to farm hop life. So what is it? What is, what is farm hop life? You're Matt DeRocher from farm hop life. Uh, give me, oh yeah, before that, let me, let me ask you one thing. I really sure. liked your answer to, uh, on my intake form, it says, what does living outside the systems of control mean to you? Because, you know, it means something different to everybody and they're coming to the show from all different angles. And I loved your answer. So if you just want to give that answer and then we'll dive into what, uh, what farm hop life is. I don't even remember what I wrote because I rewrote ah, my oh, notes yo, all the time. Hold on. I will, I will bring it up. Um. It was a. F oh, hold on one second. That's okay. I I've got I've got some. So, you know, there's lots of systems of control, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna bump that. Make it too much. Uh. So like news, money, politics, like a job. You know, like it's amazing that anything even works. Like I was driving down the road last week, and I'm like. I don't know how anything is held together here. Like it's amazing that, you know, we can just exchange like numbers in bank accounts or like just stupid little pieces of paper and like every, everybody's okay with this. Like, like, th like this vehicle has value, but this stupid piece of paper in my hand doesn't have any value. Like my labor has value, but again, like I get paid in this stupid paper. Like it's, it's incredible that, you know, we actually have a functioning society, you know, functioning, right? Um, but the the system of control I'm trying to exit the most is 
lifestyle. So like the 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 song that came out recently by Dirt by Jordan Davis. I don't know if you ever heard it. It's uh it's on the country station. Uh nah, I I I turned off country uh after Eric Church's second album. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have to listen to this one. It ain't bad. So like it's you know basically you know buy a little piece of property and like that's what that's what life is and um you know it all there's like a a verse in the chorus where it's like you know it all goes by real quick you know it makes me like even my not even two-year-old sings like by dirt and so it's, it's pretty cute but man i can't right. get help but like choked up every time i hear that song because like I want to spend as much time as possible with him and, you know, baby on the way, like, right. uh, you know, they, for like a, being like a dad, you, you, what, the, what do they say? Like you only have like 18 summers with your kid, right? Yep. This is summer number two for me. So they're, they're, they're coming, they're getting knocked out pretty quick. And I just want to like, dude, it breaks my heart every time I step out that door and like, he's like waving, waving by like, I gotta go to work like this. This yep. is killing me here. You know? Dude, yeah. <laughs> Corey and I are the same way. Like I found, I found my soulmate in her. Like we, we are one of those couples that if we spent every minute together, we wouldn't get sick of each other. We just like road trips and all that. We're always down the forefront. And it's like, I'm spending 40 hours a week or 60 hours a week or whatever away from this person. Yeah. Why are I figuring out how to do something with her to spend my time with her and also be making that living or have to spend less time away? Like you said, lifestyle, like why the hell do I need all the shit I have? We, we had that, that moment when we looked at our house and went, we got a 1400 square foot farmhouse for th the two of us and the three dogs. Like, why are we paying to heat it? Why are we paying to like, we need to figure this shit out. We need to go smaller and minimize. And uh, yeah, that I, I'm okay with living below the poverty line. And as long mm -hmm. as I'm happy, you know, the poverty line is something that they've established. It doesn't mean that I can't live for less than that and be very right. happy. So um, yeah, I, I'm cool with that. But I found your quote or found what you had wrote in. And uh, you said, tell yourself, I deserve the life I want to live and then work backwards from there. And it's 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 really akin to like uh, Jack Spierko's kind of lifestyle design and um, and his philosophy. I think he had like a, a eight eight step process or something. I remember uh, going through where yeah, you asked yourself all the questions and you got the answer, and then you figured out how to get to the answer, and that that kind of really rings true with the statement. So I definitely feel that and and uh, loved it when I when I read that. So, but it's actually anyway. Jack's fault that I'm doing this. Uh... <laughs> Me too. <laughs> So, dude, I must have heard him say it like a hundred times, you know, you deserve the life you want to live type of thing. And it all, it all, like all starts with the mindset. So for, for people that want the quick and dirty, paint a vibrant picture of the life you want to be living. Like, I mean, as detailed as possible. So like, for me, it's, um, I want to be able to travel more, like, my wife and I are big fans of the amazing race. And so okay. like, Oh, that place is cool. Oh, we should go there. Oh, that's amazing. You know, even just places inside of like our own country. Like I haven't even seen like 0.01% of this country, you know, I mean, nothing next to nothing. And so I want to be able to experience that um, and meet people all like all across this country um, eventually the world that would be cool but let's let's start let's start <laughs> locally right and there's uh, a lot of land out there to cover uh, a hell of a lot of land. <laughs> yeah and i just want to i just want to go exploring like so so like how do you make that work right so that's the problem solving thing like okay what can i be doing what do i like to do that allows me to do this thing that i really want to do so Wow, it's like I'm talking to myself, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's kind of weird, uh, but uh, yeah. So farm hop life, you you kind of set the the goal to 
go and travel. That's what you want to do. That's your lifestyle. So this is the the project you started to get there, right? Mm-hmm. Nice, nice, nice. So we uh, so the idea did that did it kind of just sit there and uh, and develop did it develop at all? Was it just an aha moment? Uh, what you're doing? What are your plans? What are your plans with Farm Hop Life? What is uh, what it kind of describe it for us? So next summer. 2023 uh i'm loading up the family into an rv to basically help other homesteaders uh we need more people growing food we need decentralized producers like this is this is getting insane the centralized food system and you know we've again uh, not sure how it's been working so far like it's kind of a miracle that it has been but it's all really fallen apart like suddenly then or gradually then suddenly right um and so I, it, people just need help just getting things going or maintained or expanding. And so we're going to just record the journey and make that our niche. It's kind of like far, uh, homestead rescue without the drama. <laughs> and, yeah. And I, I, I had already checked out before any of that stuff came on and I saw that, I saw that name and like, we kind of checked out a TV right around the beginning of bar rescue, like season one, season two. And I was like, I saw homestead rescue and I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> it's gotta be similar. It, like they don't, it they ain't don't bad. It, yeah. <laughs> so I did, I didn't miss anything. Not seeing it. <laughs> I don't know the, the characters like it's very amped up for TV. It's pretty oh. obvious, but like yeah. uh, the main characters for like, they're all from Alaska and, He's always yelling in his excavator. And so I always got to, whenever we're watching, I'm like, pay attention, please. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. As far as reality TV, like, it's one of the better ones. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I've. I've totally checked out of everything. Like people, yeah. you go to, like I hanging out with coworkers or something. And they're like, "Oh yeah, did you see this on that?" And I'm like, "What? <laughs> no." <laughs> or yeah. that's still on because it's been over a decade since I've been watching shit. And like I, that was on when I was. I thought I think Survivor's still on. Like, I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't, but anyway, so so you came up with this plan to kind of to hop around. I love the name, like. When I put it together, I, I was telling you before that I read it and I just kind of glossed over it. Like all of a sudden I put two and two together. I'm like, oh, all right. Yep. Yep. That's cool. <laughs> Farm hop life is a lot easier to remember than Matt DeRozier. Like I'm just a, like, it's just an, I'm just a name. Like no one gives a, gives a crap who I am. Right. Yep. But like, if you can put like two or three simple <laughs> words together, like, People, that might stick a little bit better is kind of what I was thinking. And it's catchy, it's catchy of... too. And it, it, yeah, it's all around. It was all around a good choice for sure. So thanks. So you, you decided, you decided to do this. Um, and you got, you have one, you have a son right now and another on the way and mm -hmm. a wife. Any mm -hmm. pet? Uh, no, we, okay. we had a so dog. That, that makes last it easier. Year. <laughs> yeah. For now. Right. Uh, we, we had a dog for like a week and my 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 wife broke out into hives oh no um, yeah. when when the dog licked her arm and so that that we had to return him it was just too bad it was it was an awesome dog but oh man um <laughs> yep just just gonna be the four of us and the other thing i was thinking about is i'm not sure if people will really want outside like pets or animals coming onto their property if that like hey you know I don't know what your dog's carrying or you guys were just at this other farm. I don't want their junk here or, yep. you know, you're, I'm not sure what your dog's like attitude is mentality. Like I don't want it nipping at my cows or my sheep or whatever. So. Yep. Um, oh yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. We were, so I have, um, I have like homestead consulting, like I'm willing to do it and everything, but it's, it's more of, I'm trying to push that, uh, that raw acreage development just for that mm -hmm. reason, because 
it's tough. It's tough to find somebody that's like, yeah, bring your three St. Bernards with you. I mean, although they are always on lead or I don't let them run and, and all that, we keep them under control, but it's like, nobody knows that nobody's unless they've interacted right. with them. So yeah, that kind of like really, really uh, pigeonholes your, your available people that you're willing to help unless you're staying off site and helping them. So, and you know, there is that. So finding hip camps can be hard too. Uh, that allow three pets and then even the ones that allow three pets you put three pets and then you start chatting with them you're like yeah it's three St. Bernard's are like oh in a camper <laughs> yeah so it's like three more people well yeah yeah well, like we really had to to dial in the weight of the dogs like it was something that we had to consider with like gross vehicle weight and all that is like we have okay so 170 160 and 140 and that's a significant amount of weight just in dog <laughs> and plus their food. So yeah, it was, it was, you could brush them and shed another 50 pounds. Yeah, there, yeah, that's for sure. For sure. We definitely take off a dog every time we brush them. So, okay. so you got the four of you, you're going to go into, you're going to go into a camper. Um, what the, what the wife have to say? Was she part of this decision or was, was this kind of like your crazy idea and you had to break it to her and, uh, and, and convince her or how'd that go down? Absolutely. 100% my crazy idea. And <laughs> I did have to convince her and it was quite, quite a shock to her at first. Cause like when we moved to Montana, like this is like right now what we have, like, this is what we always talked about. Uh, having a homestead, you know, having some acreage, awesome views, you know, this is like where we wanted to be forever. Like, and now she's like, and, and you want to change this? Like, this is, she's like, sorry, I'm just like, I'm going to need some time to think about this. Like this is like, you know, you've been working so hard to get us to a certain point and you just want to like, Nope, let's pivot. I'm going to do something else. And how it all like kind of started is, you know, I'm trying to get stuff done around here and I've got not, if they were half finished projects, I'd be happy about that. They're like 10% <laughs> projects. Right. And I was yeah. thinking if I could have somebody else helping me here, how much further could I be? And why can't I be that guy for other people? I should right. be. So I was, I was helping a buddy, uh, about 25 minutes away last summer. And I was just thinking like, how, how could I live here? <laughs> like, how can I, just, he's got like 116 acres and uh, he's got, he just stocked his, the pond with like 500 trout <laughs> that he has. And uh, I went, I went uh, deer and elk hunting on his property last fall. And uh, it was pretty sweet. So I'm just like, how can I, how would I live right. here? And so this is kind of like the wheels really got turned. And then like, how can I have like this, but also be able to travel and blah, blah, blah. So it's just kind of just, you know, get that, get that machine turning, man. And so, it, you know, Katie came on board with some like reluctancy. She's like, so what are we, you know, then I came with like, what are we going to do with the house? What are we going to do with the kids? What are we, you know, what are you going to do about your job? Give the kids away. Just give the kids away. <laughs> Nah, nah. I like my kids. Even even uh, the one that ain't here yet, I like them already. Yeah, it kind of happens that way, doesn't it? Right, especially when they look just like you. You're like, you're all right. <laughs> mini me's, mini right. me's. So, so you convinced her. Um, how when? How long have you been planning? Because yeah, we've been at this for like going on two and a half years, like getting this in in the process and. Uh, how long, how long have you been working at it? So the idea came up last summer, 2021. And, uh, I did, I did a farm, to, my very, I think it was my very first YouTube video was a farm tour of my buddy Joe's place. And man, that first video took me like weeks to edit because I couldn't find <laughs> like, like I, I couldn't find a good video like video editing program. And plus like the learning curve on top of that, like this should just like, this isn't new to me. Like I haven't edited videos in like a couple of years, but you know, like it should work this way. It should be fluid, blah, blah, blah. That. And so 
So that kind of started. Then I interviewed him. And then the first of this year, um, I was like, I really got to, I really got to start cranking out more content. Uh, I don't know if you listen to Gary V at all. Uh, you could take him or leave him, but like, you know, I read his be, stuff. it's I, content, more, content, really, content. Yeah. I don't really listen as much as read his, read his quotes. His one-off quotes are fantastic. Like just right. really make you think. So yeah, right. I definitely know the the motivation you're talking about from Gary. Yeah. So, you know, love him or hate him, you know, just basically he kicks you in the ass to just be producing content. And so, you know, I started just posting stuff that I was doing. And I'm like, I'm doing like next to nothing. Like there's, what do I post? You know, like, as eh, this is halfway interesting, I guess I'll post that. Uh, so I started, I started, uh, you know, interviewing other people and getting involved online. And I'm like an aerial. So I, I, uh, I threw up like a thing late last year. Hey, I'm wanting to interview homesteaders. And she was like the first one to email me back. And she was my first interview. So that was she's, like my first, fantastic. you know, doing this. She, yeah, she is. That was, awesome. that was a good one to start with for sure. Like, uh, right? I had another, like I had Tim. Tim was my first interview. How hard is it to interview Toolman Tim? Like the right. guy basically interviews himself. So it was pretty, <laughs> pretty fantastic. Love to, uh, <laughs> start yeah. with so yeah ariel ariel's fantastic i've been following her for quite a, some time on socials and uh, having her on last week was fan yeah she's 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 really cool so she's got to be she's kind of up in your well you're in montana how far are you away from her about seven hours seven so yeah not too bad <laughs> if we end up going to like uh the tetons or something like that i could probably message her and be like Hey, so you want to drop a pin or I guess she doesn't have a smartphone. So it'd be like, can you text me your GPS coordinates or yeah, yeah, email yeah. me or yeah. something? I can come find you. <laughs> yeah. That blew my mind when you were talking about uh, no growing zone there. Like that is yeah. just killing frost all year round. I'm like, what a myth. Like I'm thinking about leaving Minnesota, like feeling sorry for myself. Cause how cold and all this shit is. She says that I'm like, <sighs> okay yeah, you can have right. it <laughs> you can have it and oh, as far yeah. as uh you know timing and like getting started you you've had i people always say like i had a lot of jobs you have definitely outdone me in number <laughs> of jobs so you know what i'm talking about when you say like you know that feeling you get at your job just like this ain't for me anymore like i gotta do something else like i if i don't have a plan on the next step forward i'm just gonna end up quitting like two weeks would be like <laughs> my two know, day notice i'm not right. working for you today anymore <laughs> <laughs> i like i haven't heard that one before that's funny yeah i had a, had a buddy that uh, actually was a technician with me at this current job and he went to another job he sent me a tiktok the one day it was this guy was like calling his boss and he's like yep got a vision problem this morning don't see myself working for you anymore so here's my two-day notice i don't work for you anymore as of today <laughs> I was like, that's fantastic i gotta that's throw that one in the pocket because i'm i'm definitely one to use that so right but yeah i definitely bridge. i yeah i know i know exactly the feeling you're talking about um i get a rush i get endorphin release from learning new shit uh mm -hmm. so going into a new industry even if it's the same genre like maintenance or whatever uh service technician as long as it's a new product a new technology or something like that i really get ingrained into it and i can ignore all the bullshit of the being an employee um i don't do well with being an employee because stupid decisions and me having to deal with the consequences don't go hand in hand like i am uh if i'll make a decision i'm more than happy to suffer the consequences but what will make decisions and I have to have a harder day or bullshit go roll downhill to me. Then once I don't have that endorphin rush of learning the new systems, all that stuff starts eating at me. And it's usually three to five years. Like I'm in the, like I get up to speed in that first 60 months to a year, then master it. And then I got to fucking go. Like it's just it's yep. sad. So yeah. So I'm like you, when you were talking about looking for that life you want and I'm looking for that ever changing position where 
I'm the only one suffering the consequences of my decisions. And yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the direction I went. And yeah, so it makes sense. Like, yeah, that was, that was the, the, yeah, your quote when uh, living outside the system is, is just kind of finding that life you want and getting there and not worrying about what the, what the hell is going on elsewhere. What difference does it mm-hmm. make? So it's pretty freeing. It is. It is absolutely freeing. But to, to kind of come back to convincing Katie, she's like, okay, we need a plan. Like, cause I'm like knowing, like, like feeling like I'm feeling right? This is, this is not going to last. My time here is limited and I need to let my employer know like, Hey, like as soon as possible, right? Cause I don't want to burn this bridge. Like I kind of, I'm going to be leaving. <laughs> so yeah, Mike, Mike so, keeps asking me when I'm leaving and I'm like, wait, really? I'll let you know. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh yeah. Yeah, I just, I just keep, I don't know. I don't know the date I'm leaving. So I just sure. keep telling them. And, and with service work and everything, like there's always work for me to do. So it's not like, and the, it's a revolving door. It's a, it's a, it's kind of an, uh, you can go into it as an entry level position. So okay, it's like, I'm easily, re- not, I mean, like four years experience is tough to replace today, but like hiring someone that can go mm-hmm. through the training is it is what it is. So they're happy to have me as long as I, I, I'm willing to work. So they just keep asking me when, so when are you planning on taking off? I'm like, well, I'm going to Tennessee for two weeks. Um, either I can turn my van in before I leave or I can come back and keep working if I'm coming back. <laughs> so, like when, you, when you're willing to walk away, it's easy to request time off. <laughs> yeah right so what size rig are you moving into that's this is what uh this is intriguing to me because i'm on the on the rv side too but what what do you what kind of setup you got so here's the thing we don't know yet (laughs) so (laughs) so budget being budget con conscious uh we're gonna next next summer we're gonna sell my wife's car and the truck is already paid off. It's a half ton. It's a, it's an F-150 with a tow package. So, like, it makes it challenging. Like, I, I listened to your video about, you know, the truck versus the camper. Like, people do it backwards where they buy the truck and then get a camper to fit. Like, that mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense to buy the camper first. Buy the camper that you want and buy the truck to fit. Like, that makes a lot of sense. But prices are just stupid right now. Like, I don't care if I could you know, sell my truck right now for what I paid for it six years ago. Um, I ain't getting another one that's that good. <laughs> like, yeah, we, we ended up with, uh, what, 2010, 2011 truck. Just right. It, it was one of those, we trust our mechanic here. We've been using them for eight years. He's been nothing but good to us. Never screwed us over. And everything that we were going to buy, we just brought to him and said, okay, here's the price. Tell me what it needs to be solid. Mm-hmm. We don't give a shit what it looks like. It's got rust on the tailgate. It's got all that shit. It's like almost better for us because we just like to kind of blend in. I don't need a flashy, you know, $90,000 truck. And we took it to him and said, how much to get into it? Like to be solid because it's going to be our only vehicle and we're going to be pulling our fucking house with it. So <laughs> we kind of, we kind of have to have it reliable, but we were able to pick up a 2011 that we've been happy with. We dumped a little money into it, but for the mm-hmm. price we got it, it just all made sense. And uh, yeah, so it was kind of just feeling it out, but we needed the space for like the dogs and, right. and the fact that we're taking everything we own with us. And, and so, yeah, we were kind of talking about that before. Um, are you are you keeping a home base because we're we're wavering on that and you got a little more time so i i kind of like where you're at where you can kind of feel out where this bullshit goes um because mm-hmm. it seems like it's on a teetering point like we're on a teeter-totter like it's going to go sideways it's not going to go sideways everything's going to kind of be shitty for a while but not real shitty um so you have a time to like play that out a little bit uh right we, we are in flux whether we want to just buy some buy a home base we know we don't want to be in minnesota so buy a home base somewhere else and then if we never use it for a homestead because we find something else then we just own a piece of property 
So that's kind of where we're at. Or, and, and, and you're kind of, you're kind of in flux, whether you want to keep a home base where you're at or what you want to do too, I think. Yeah. So I had to convince Katie that it's going to be okay. Me putting in my notice. Uh, I would have liked to have given more notice, uh, but she needed more convincing first, which is, you know, it's fair. It's a big jump. It's like we got a family, you know, <laughs> like, so, so I, I talked, she was worried that if I gave notice that I'd get, I'd get fired. She's like, well, if they're going to be leaving, why would they keep you? I'm like, cause I'm employee three. Like it's the dad, the son and me. <laughs> like when a third of your workforce is gone, like you ain't like you're putting yourself in a, a really tricky spot, especially with today's labor market. Like I don't mean to be like in a power position. That's just how it is, right? Yeah, that I think that's that's helping me too with this flux. And you mm -hmm. know, we've we've been down two technicians for eight months and you know, there's no applications coming in that want to work for how much we make and the work we do. So if I'm willing to come back from my va vacation and give them another couple of weeks, they're more than happy to take it. So that year notice too, that's a, that's a big change. Um, I think when you can tell them, Hey, I'm giving you a year to prepare to figure this out because I got to take off. It's more of a respect thing. Then, oh yeah then, uh, hey i'm gonna be gone in two uh two weeks and yeah then it's basically like a minimum f you yeah that knee jerk oh well you're fired what what's a two weeks gonna what difference is i can't hire somebody and train them in in two weeks but a mm -hmm. year hey man thanks like keep us posted like yeah that's what i did it was it was like six months before we were planning on, we were trying to leave last fall uh, didn't quite make it. So sure. I gave that six month notice and I was like, Hey, in six months, I think I'm taking off, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay, we'll just keep us updated. And then when it got closer, I was like, yeah, it's going to be spring at the latest. And they're like, Oh, great. You'll work through the winter. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. great. Oh, uh, so picking out a camper, do you have ideas what you want to do? Are you doing like a, a total off grid package? Like we, uh, like we did here, or are you planning on uh, being able to hook up at, at different farms or what, what kind of your goals with uh, traveling around? Right. So given that the truck's already paid off, we're going to have to fit a camper to the size of the truck, which makes it tricky, but you know, got to stick to a budget. Otherwise just like, where does it end? You know, oh, you know, I bought a used truck and a used camper, hundred grand for you know. <laughs> oh yeah, stupid. So oh for sure. My wife's really into into like the renovation RV thing. Like, man, with like, uh, if you bought like a fifteen fifteen thousand dollar trailer, probably be like a two thousand five, give or take. Um, yeah. for about fifteen thousand dollars, put about five grand into the renovations like they look like little apartments on wheels like like oh, not yeah. as nice as like a tiny home like ariel lives in because you know insulation windows uh all that but it's also not you know twenty thousand pounds right yep yep and, well, like and with eight. your background in electrical and carpentry you're uh you're well suited to do that to do that right. renovation um, you understand the concepts and and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, that's that's kind of the way we went. We bought used, um, big enough. Like we went, we looked at all the different models and um, all the different layouts and slides and fifth wheels and blah, blah down the list. And yeah, we just ended up wanting to go bumper pull for a variety of different reasons. And we bought the mm -hmm. biggest one we could pull, like because we had to have all our stuff and then just played with weight going forward and right. tore a shitload of stuff out to make more room and mm -hmm. now we look at it and we're like we have a ton of room like yeah, i was saying in the intro we opened it up yesterday we went back in so it's empty like we pulled everything out of it because we didn't want to deal with mice or freezing and that when we got winterized it, we pulled everything out and uh we walked in there and we're like wow we got a lot of space so we're living in two rooms of our house right now Corey and i and the three dogs are in like two rooms of the house because we were just like what's the point of putting all the shit away in the house and uh yeah so going back into there it's like we're gonna actually get more room <laughs> we're moving into a camera yeah. more room <laughs> so. yeah so that's gonna be tricky 
uh, just finding a an RV on our budget's going to be tricky. Like there's all these, you know, parking lots, I guess, like from from where we live to Missoula that, you know, it's basically like park and sell type type areas. Oh, okay. And one of them's like, you know, half of it's cars and trucks and the other half is like RVs. I'm like, whoa, cool. And like one of them I saw was like an Arctic Fox. And so like we were, we drove up to Missoula and like, we'll just check it out on the way back. By the time we got back that afternoon, gone. Yeah, Like it's just sells like super quick. And which it probably wouldn't have worked out anyways, because I saw another one uh, south of us. And I, so I called the dealership because it was on like a dealer lot. I'm like, Hey, how much for that Arctic Fox? So like it's sold, but it was listed, listed for 54,000. I'm like, yeah, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> can, can afford yeah, it anyways. They're, they're spendy. I've heard they're worth it, but yeah. Yeah. Spendy. If you want to be in the cold and you don't want to uh, just burn through a lot of fuel heating and stuff, that's a wood right. stove, man. If you end up, if you end up uh, wanting to be anywhere uh, borderline cold, that wood stove, it just takes it takes the chill off and it really just saves on uh, the propane so i'm 100 percent doing that which is glad like i'm glad i found you because i'm just gonna <laughs> rip off absolutely everything you're doing for sure doing that like wood stove awesome uh composting toilet gonna do it like yeah for sure for that that one was like we came in so everybody's like oh composting toilet outhouse blah 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 all this uh, going back in time and i was like Man, we came back from our trip and we went came back into the house and I was like, this is gross. Like <laughs> I was you I was shitting in a bucket. <laughs> I was shitting in a bucket and I came back into the house with in, with a septic system and running water and I'm like, man, this is gross. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Is and what primitive. a waste. What a waste on the water. It's just Absolutely. unbelievable. So yeah, when we settle down, if we settle down, when we settle down, we're probably that I, I want to find some place where I don't need a septic because I don't want one. Like mm -hmm. I don't need it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of places. Go. You might just need like septic approval. Yeah. And then that's it. You don't actually have to install it. Yeah. I saw something in, in Tennessee is like a state law that the uh, property needs property needs septic, but it's very rarely enforced in the majority of mm. the counties. And I'm like, ah, I hate that. I hate that someday could be enforced right. type of stuff. So yeah, here's some new I, dickhead inspector. Like oh, I'm going to make a name for myself. Watch yep. out for Mr. Whatever. I'm going to go I'll clean up all these hillbillies out in the woods doing their own thing. And yeah. So I don't you know. Sure, you so, want to take that risk, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might, you might not have a job or a, uh, uh, yeah. You a might just body. go away. <laughs> oh, so, so, um, you, so your plans are kind of still up in the air, and you're figuring it out. Um, do you, do you have a, an idea of how long you want to do it, or uh, were people ask, and just to like give them an answer. I basically just say like, yeah, we're going to try to do it for one year minimum. Just like, ideally, just do it forever, right? You know, the kind of change your mentality, like forever. We're almost like up until like last year, kind of this year. It was like, I had the mindset of like, damn, man, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to work until I'm 70 or beyond. And now, like, if I can like pull this off, off successfully, I get to do this into my seventies. You know what I mean? Like right. think about like these, like uh, who's that ex president that's like still doing like habitat for humanity. And he's like about to die every single day. Carter or, or something. Like Carter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I could be that dude, but like for farms and homesteads, dude, that would be an amazing life. That would be yeah. like, you made it like that's the level of success that I want. That's that's the whole idea behind setting up our network is getting mm -hmm. to do the work now, um, do the heavy work, and then it's just maintenance work. But then it's it kind of runs itself, and uh, building in those uh, redundancies, uh, we kind of plan on hopefully in the end. And it, and this is like all if it goes this way, like it's all so in flux right now with uh, just so many different moving parts that. And I'm okay with that. Like, it's hard to push anything. It's hard to, um, it's hard to present anything. But 
I got to wait. Like I have to wait till some things fall in place before I make those decisions. So I'm kind of keeping it open. Uh, and yeah, we were one year minimum and now we're kind of like, let's get that property and see um, just for that security of having a place to go. And then maybe we take off from there. It all really, I think it depends on what we get out of our place. And yeah, that's, and it's yeah, you're in a little bit different situation. Cause like, you don't want to be in Minnesota anymore. Like right. uh, what I always tell people is like negative 30 in Minnesota is a lot different than negative 30 here. Cause it's dry cold. It doesn't yeah. hurt your face. Like, like, damn, that's cold. But like, it doesn't <laughs> like sting your face. Like, Mm -hmm. This sucks. So yeah. we we'd like to stay, like at least hold on to the property. Um, just if nothing else. So so when we we were talking just before the show, you know, the realtor was like, "You could have a crap load of money for your place." And like, mm, that's tempting. But if we ever want to have a place in this valley ever again, we're not going to be able to afford it. Uh, you know, just people are just moving in. Like, so the Bitterroot Valley it used to be called poverty with a view like that was because I mean, it's just like, you don't have to go that far to be able to see like how people really live around here. I mean, it's like burned out trailers and like junkyards of trailers and half finished trailers. And I mean, there's like, there's still like nice houses and then there's like really nice houses, but let's not turn a blind eye to, you know, all these people that could afford just the land at the time and, lived in basically a shed and move eventually moved a you know single wide onto the property um, sounds fantastic point. to me <laughs> actually it kind of does as it long as really it's appealing. not as long as it's not you know next to like a highway uh oh, yeah <laughs> so so we gotta we gotta finish up the house get it prepared to airbnb i'm we're, we're almost positive that's what we're doing um, is doing the Airbnb like it's riskier, but right. it's again you get to hold on to this asset and it's gonna subsidize like for the time being farm hop life right going forward. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a game changer too when you're not there and it's available three sixty five. Like mm -hmm. it, it's it, when you have that Airbnb that you're renting on weekends or stuff like that, or it's limited, you're kind of really, you're scrambling to make that mortgage payment covered and some income. But when it's 30 days and you can charge a quarter of your mortgage payment for a weekend, it's like, well, now we're, now we're talking about something. So mm -hmm. Yeah, we absolutely we considered the renting thing and I just I don't think I want the headache. But then again, we're in two different in two different situations where we don't want to come back here like this right. isn't something we want. So if we can just cash out and move on. But if I did, if, if I wanted to keep this property up here and it was anything that I wanted to ever move forward with again, yeah, I, that Airbnb rental thing that that makes sense. And and so that's kind of that's kind of the uh that's kind of the income you're, you're rolling for uh, when you start on the road. Are you yep. looking to monetize the help or are you just looking for giving help in exchange for a place to, to park? What's, so, what's kind of your model there? Both. Um, so give it. So how how woofing works, if nobody nobody knows, is typically they give you room and board and two to three meals a day and you like you don't get paid well if we already have a place to live the rv maybe just have hookups or whatever but we're going to set it up to boondock as well um if they don't have hookups but if they do and they're like as long if you can figure out how to hook up to this pedestal this pedestal like all yours like hey i i'm an electrician i can do that i don't want to do that yeah <laughs> i'll just jerry rig it bypass the meter and <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so the issue is going to be can you provide enough value for work if you do like if they do give us like any uh protein or produce for four miles right so right. instead of doing it like just just for me like back in my early 20s when i really didn't know anything you know, that was one thing. Now, my 
like I've expanded my skills, but I have, you know, four mouths to feed. Am I bringing up enough value for them to be like, okay, you can stay here for like, and do 20, 30 hours worth of work and anything beyond that, you know, food, maybe some cash. Um, and if, you know, if they're like, Hey, you know, uh, you put in your 30 hours worth of valuable, valuable labor. You know, I got a buddy down the road that could use some help. Uh, he'll pay you blah, 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 an hour cash, crypto, silver, whatever. Right. Uh, I ground beef, literally all that stuff's valuable to, uh, to get at X, Y, Z done. So. Yep. Yeah. I'm a hustler. Same thing. Just yeah. willing to do whatever. Um, and that's kind of that homestead consulting uh, area that, and it, it kind of lines up with what you're doing is, yeah, I'll come. I can, I can tell you what I've done. I can help you build something. I can give you advice from what I know. Like I'm not an expert. Like I don't ever claim to be an expert. I do claim to have done it and done it my right. way. And I can tell you if it worked or not and the things I would do different. Uh, so I think that's valuable. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the hands on. I'm never. I'm never gonna bullshit you. If I don't know, I'm gonna tell you. I. I don't know, man. Like I never exactly. claim to know everything by any means. I know a lot of shit. Like I've done a lot of different jobs. I've talked to a lot of different people. Bartending, to me, like filled my head with so many different interests and so many different things, um, and so many different people that I talked to that I would go home and then in my off time, I would look up the stuff they were talking about. And so it was just like this constant filling my head with all these different things. So uh -huh. it makes it, it, it multi-valued like you have uh, with the, the experience and, and whatnot coming onto the property, being able to do different things and, and help different people that way. So, yeah, I think, I think you're, you're definitely on the right track there. So uh, I hope so. <laughs> There'll be like other little ways to, I've got ideas to like monetize farm hop life. I actually thought it might be kind of cool if maybe like once a month you and I like got together and like recorded like some brainstorming, like, oh, what if we did this like money making thing on the road? Like that'd be kind of fun. Sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm always looking for other stuff like that. Um, so what do you more doing content, right now? more content? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what it is. Um, I, I was tired of talking about the internet. I'm finally to a place where I can upload as many fucking videos as i want because it doesn't take four hours um yeah i dumped my internet and the day i was doing it i was doing speed tests uh the day that i was canceling it and it was like 1.1.1 1 .1 meg uh download and a point point three meg upload like how are you supposed to have a content creation business with internet speeds like that <laughs> like when i'm blown away i got four meg download now on my cell internet at yeah. my house right now and it's like holy shit it's like lightning and people are talking about 100 meg internet and i'm like what does that even look like <laughs> right what do you do with all those megs do you even know what to do with all the megs <laughs> oh yeah Seed so... torrents or something i guess <laughs> yeah yeah I'd be, I'd be running nodes and all sorts of shit. oh yeah dude <laughs> really uh, so what are you doing now? Like what, are, what are, what, what kind of, what do you got going on now to help, to help people and to uh, work with others and kind of, and uh, yeah, what do you, so you're, you're a year out ish year and year and a couple months out of when you want to take off. Um, what's the plan for the meantime? Yeah. So um, I gave my official notice my last day, unless something happens, I'm going to, I'm giving them to at least April 1st, 2023. And that's not like a cruel April fool's joke for like, <laughs> that's, that's actually going to happen. That's just how it you should, you should show up oh, on the second and be like, <laughs> what did you, what do you mean? I'm here to work. Yeah. That's just, that's just how it works out. In the parking lot, they're like, wait, are you serious? That was the longest running April fool's joke we've ever seen. It was over a year. <laughs> I am not that cool. I'm not about to give the owner a heart attack. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> uh, that might, I might kind of, it would be a fun prank that would, that, speaking of content, you know, I, I could do that for content. Yeah. yeah uh, so, so what we're doing right now, you know, I'm just, um, I have a very structured uh, interview. Like I, you know, talking to, talking to homesteaders and farmers you know, my interviews that can explain things like things that work, things that don't work, 
it's okay to fail and tips for a successful homestead and home life. Um, I, I ask guests to share things that have worked successes and failures because one, people can look at the successes like, Oh, that breed of pig worked for them. That's interesting. Or like this breed of pig didn't work for them or so. And that it's okay to fail because I think that's really where a lot of people have hesitancy. Like I want chickens, but what if they all die? Like it's not more, that hard. You, yeah, you, get, you get more, more. You get something else. <laughs> I've got a black thumb gardening. Like just if, if gardening is what, you, like, I know it's super discouraging when like you just, you know, kill everything, but try a different method. Keep trying. Like if that's something that you want to do, keep pushing it, keep trying. And so, um, you know, and I'm helping, helping other people promote their stuff. Like I had a, had a lady on that. Um, she, she makes goat soaps and lotions, like out of goat milk. Um, they're not for goats. It's made from goats. (laughs) Uh, and part of what's cool about her setup is that, so she has a 11 or 12 year old son. That's almost nonverbal, like autistic. Oh, and wow. yeah, but once she got chickens on the property, just starting her homestead, he became a little bit more verbal. And then when they brought goats onto the property, he bought, he became even more verbal in like, she goes to hear a nonverbal, your nonverbal kids say, I love you to their goat. Like that was just like, so powerful for them. Like we're doing something right here. And so yeah. uh, like, I think 10% of her proceeds go to a specific autism. Like, I think it's a college fund, I think like, oh, uh, yes. yeah. So that's pretty cool. And like, yes, I, I'm gonna give you as much business. I'm going to push it, push as much business as I can your way. And so we're actually going to be doing like a video for her kind of like, Hey, check out like this soap and this lotion that we got from Kaylee. She, um, you know, this is her story and whatnot. And like, it's actually good stuff. Like it's super, you can tell like the quality of her materials cause she works super hard to, um, to locally source everything. So, cause she's, she's using it. She's putting on her kids. Like she's giving it to like her grandma to like treat her eczema and stuff. Oh, am I allowed to say treat? Wait, don't don't get me FDA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's it's nuts. Like what you can say. Like I was talking to somebody and they're like, they're like, oh, you can't really say that online. I'm like, why? Like, what do you mean? Oh, well, you can't say that it does this or that. I'm like, but it does. <laughs> like, right. I put the coffee salve on the mosquito bite, and it goes away. <laughs> like, I'm not saying right. like it will work for you. I'm saying it worked for me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's, that's really cool with the, with the sun like that. Uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, I already did my uh, recorded interview for my on-call week uh, with Robert Ralston and he's got a nonverbal uh, autistic son. And wow. yeah, the conversation is fantastic. I don't want to spoil anything we talk about, but sure. um, yeah, it's definitely different, a different mindset of homesteading and prepping and, and stuff like that when you're dealing with something outside that and it would really kind of open my eyes and i'm excited to go um like you are to different and see different people and even if we're not doing the consulting thing i'm building this network of people around the country that i can swing by and see be close enough stay at their property or stay somewhere close and meet these people in real life and see what they got going on and experience different things um, learn different techniques but also see what other people are struggling with and um, and successful with. And then that's exciting for me. Is yeah, that's exactly book. what I'm trying to do. Ex- like almost do a T exactly. Cause like sometimes all people need is just like a dumb pair of hands. Like, can you pound T posts? Yeah, I can pound T posts. <laughs> like, yep. can you swing a and- hammer? I can swing a hammer. <laughs> If somebody if somebody had sent me an email and said, "Hey, do you want me to come by and and drill uh, forty post holes for your fence this afternoon while you're at work?" I'd have been like, 
<laughs> yeah, let me spray paint where to put them. You dig them, and I'll even set the posts and fill them back in. As long as somebody's right. out there digging those holes while I'm doing something else, that would have been invaluable to me. Oh, can I stay Absolutely. on your property, and will you feed me dinner every night for doing it? You're fucking right, I will. <laughs> <laughs> And That's you might right. be staying here longer because I got a lot of shit to get done and I'm gone 70 hours a week or 60 hours a week at my full-time job. That's yeah. That's a hundred percent. The idea of what we're going for. Um, Cause I don't, I don't want to see others fail like that. That it kind of breaks my heart when people are just like, I'm throwing it in the towel. I'm done homesteading. Like, man, we needed you. Like you, you may not realize it, we need you like the whole homestead farming gardening community we need everybody here to help support others promote that you know promote that lifestyle like you can grow your own food and like not this fake crap that you see on like instagram hmm. where it's like you know they're super polished you know in like completely perfect homestead where like she's out there in like a sundress picking tomatoes every morning and the like the sun's just that's, perfect that's not what it up. looks like at your place hell no dude <laughs> and i got like the one of the best views right and like dude i have i have garbage it's not really garbage it mean it's it looks like garbage like I have a use for it somewhere for something at some time <laughs> it's everywhere like yep. it, like it's i got a lot of cleanup to do before uh before we peace out of here but um yeah that's what like, I, that's what we're doing right now i finally got the dumpster in and and just like i have value out of this stuff but no one else does like somebody right. might uh, it's, it's it's really this weird situation do i just want to empty it and sell it as is and blah 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 or leave some of the valuable things uh that somebody else won't have to accumulate uh as far as tools and stuff like that and uh, I, I was drafting my I've been drafting my for sale by owner for like Craigslist and stuff when I mm -hmm. when I'm ready to start having people come up and look and that you said it Instagram homestead like that's that that line or that sentiment is definitely in there that this is a homestead it was a running working homestead that we only had garbage pickup every other week one can like you're running a business you're getting all this stuff in from Amazon we're getting all this stuff in for seed and like uh microgreens and all this stuff and what the fuck do you do with all the packaging because right. my garbage only comes every other week you know how much fucking garbage i have in 14 days <laughs> like i try to burn off some of this but it's like right i don't like burning the plastic shit when the black smoke's coming out and you're it's sure. just like i don't like doing that um i like to try to recycle it i like to try to get rid of it somehow responsibly what's recycling <laughs> yeah we don't have recycling pickup here we don't either we don't either i think oh, we actually okay. have to pay for it <laughs> like they make you pay for it so like i don't i don't necessarily want to burn the stuff because it's just bad that's just fucking bad um yeah i worked i worked in that industry for a while i know how bad it actually is when you burn off that plastic sure. um and so yeah it's just this i don't want to send it to the landfill like I, i'm a nature mm. guy but then I got a pile of fucking furniture down in the woods or paneling that when we did the, the rip out of the house and we didn't get a dumpster, that stuff could get burned. But it's it's so fucking busy here. I don't have time to stand around on a Saturday and tend a bonfire to get right. rid of some wood. You know what's OK? It's sitting down in the woods doing nothing. <laughs> Yeah, as long as it's nothing but wood or like compressed cardboard or wood. Well, pulp right, or right. It's not yeah, chemicals yeah. leaching. It's not shit like <laughs> From that. It's, yeah. It's just like let it break down. It'll eventually just deteriorate. And but yeah, the listing is gonna be like this is not your Instagram homestead. You're not gonna show up here and the chicken coop is perfectly clean and this yeah, no. No, it's but it's funny you, know you bring that up because my parents are here last weekend and we were talking about like you know things we gotta do to prepare the the home for airbnb and i'm like yeah that that shed looks kind of junky i don't know at the very least i might move it to like a different part of the property and my dad's like we well, were tearing down the chicken coop aren't you i'm like no it looks kind of cool like it's like i intentionally did it like rustic looking mm -hmm. and it was also all free material and he's like, well, that thing looks kind of junky. Nah, nah, chicken coop stayed. I don't care if it looks junky. Like, it's part of 
being out in the West. Like, like it's yep. not actually old, but it looks old. So, yeah, mine is. Mine's like the old uh, metal build, tin building, put up probably in the seventies, eighties. I'm guessing. Um, and I just refinished it. And like you said, free materials, whatever plywood I had, Mm -hmm. uh, for my roost, I just walk out in the woods and cut, cut branches that would work. Like I took the time to find one. Okay. This one's the right kind of shape. And I just threw it together like that. I've had like 14 different types of nesting boxes down there. Cause I experimented and went through them all. And, and so it's just, yeah, it's just a bunch of stuff. (laughs) It's like, like you just have stuff. Yep, you just got stuff. And like it's interesting you were talking about, you know, do like tools that you're keeping that you uh-huh. have to bring that you're bringing with you. And I'm like thinking, do I bring my chap saw? Do I bring my table saw? What do I do with it? Do I keep it here? Do I store it? Do I bring it with me? Cuz like, yep. you know, that table saw like, yeah, it folds up, but it's like, you know, two foot by two foot by two foot, all even still all folded up. You know, that's a lot of real estate in the bed of the truck. And, you know, it ain't going in the camper, right? right. Yep. So just like little things like that. We contemplated like keeping a four wheeler and a bunch of the larger tools and all that stuff and getting like a, a shipping container or a storage mm-hmm. unit or something like that. And then we're like, will we really come back to Minnesota to get it? Will it be worth the time? So you figure a couple hundred bucks for a table saw, you get one used, it's cheaper. Chop saw, mm-hmm. four wheeler, all this stuff, you, you're looking at like five grand, six grand worth of stuff. And now we're down in Tennessee. Now I got to figure out how to get it. I got to come back and get it or wherever we end up. Maybe it's New Mexico. Like now I got to come back and get it. It's been sitting in a storage shed. It's like fucking sell it and buy it, buy it new or used. Or if I actually right. need it, rent it or whatever. So. Yeah, we yeah. struggled with that for a while. And once I let go, and I'm like, I don't care. Once it was moving into the camper that really did it, that flipped the switch for me because Corey moved in. She moved all her stuff in that she wanted to take. She's she's been very proactive on this, and I've been kind of more slowly figuring out exactly what I want. Um, and so she moved in. I moved out there. Like we were living there, but I was still sleeping in the house, taking a shower in the house. All my stuff was in the house. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, I realized I don't need shit. <laughs> like I was so happy with nothing. Like, and so just figuring out what clothes I need and what limited tools. And I think being a mobile technician has really helped me with that because I work out sure. of a van all the time. So sense. my, my uh, ratchet wrenches, I have two wrenches that have eight wrenches and like just that kind of stuff. I've, I've really developed a, a knack for finding those multi-use tools and, and, mm-hmm. So yeah, getting down to getting down to nothing and just, and once you flip that switch and getting rid of it. And, uh, I think it was Chris Prater at Jack's, the last, uh, Jack's workshop where he was live streaming the presentations and he was like, anything under a hundred bucks, I just throw it away or donate it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we, we rolled that number back down to 50 cause I just don't 50 bucks is 50 bucks. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's fifty dollars at this point. Like, I'll be I'll just be plowing through getting rid of stuff, and I'm like, it, can I list it for fifty dollars? No, and it goes yeah. either in the in the dumpster or in the donate pile. <laughs> it sounded like you said donut pile, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, the donut pile, <laughs> the pile of donuts that you keep around. <laughs> oh, so what else? What else? You got anything else you want to kind of rap about, or uh, any any questions for me? You said you had questions for me, like you were interested in what I was doing. Uh, uh, but, yeah, but I'm wondering if I should save them for my show. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm definitely come on chat again for there sure. There was that. What there was one thing I wanted to to rap about. Just just have you ever seen the movie They Live? No. By um. Oh man, now I'm gonna blank on the director's name. I think it was like John Carter or some. I don't remember. Um, anyways, it's like it's like a weird. It's like a it's like a weird '80s. It's got Rowdy Roddy Piper in it. Actually, so. actually, I think I have now that you okay. say that. Yeah, so like he puts on like the su- magic sunglasses or whatever, and can like see the world for how it actually is, type of thing. You know, everybody, everybody like kind of uses like the matrix analogy to explain like this, you know, 
the world that we live in, like you're plugged in the matrix, man. And, you know, but I like, I like to think of the world we live in, uh, as, <laughs> as, uh, more like they live than the matrix. Well, one, because the movie's weird and life is pretty weird. And two, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want a good reboot, not like this crappy reboot. Cause the movie is like, it, it, it could be polished a little bit and it could be a great movie, not just like a, you know, a cult classic. Right. Um, so like, you know, you throw on, you know, when they, when, uh, Rowdy Roddy, yeah. Rowdy Roddy Piper throws on the, on the sunglasses for the first time and you see like the aliens you're like, it's startling at first. And like, that's how it actually is like in life. Cause you're like, you know, you put the sunglasses on and you're like, man, my money doesn't mean anything. My labor's barely worth anything. Um, just like all these, you know, my health, it's health insurance, not health care. Like they don't really give a shit about like your health care. You know, the food no, I better, eat is trash. You, it's better to keep you sick. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, you can take those sunglasses off anytime and go right back into the system. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to vote, whatever, whatever. Well, you, the, can, like, you can, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, some end. people like, you know, the whole, Oh, this is scary. I'm going to, I'm going to go back in. You can, you can take those sunglasses off anytime. But if you remember also in that movie, when he, he has the sunglasses on and he walks into the convenience store and he sees the TV on the wall and the president is one of them alien things. Mm -hmm. And he just starts laughing. That's how I feel now. Like everything is funny to me. Like the, yeah. the money is funny to me. The banks are funny to me. Politics are hilarious. Like this is, this is where I want to be like mentally. And yeah. people, people will fight you. Like, if you try to put those sunglasses on, they'll fight you just like in that scene, right? Yeah, they'll yep. just like it's like a five minute fight scene just to put some sunglasses <laughs> on a dude's face. Uh, yes, open your eyes. Like, I stopped, yeah. I stopped at like I, I went to a kind of a philosophy. Like, I do this show, I do my daily show, I do my YouTube channel, and if somebody asks me, then I talk to him. Yeah, it's different. I don't I don't ev evangelize at all anymore. I did. Like when I had that awakening, Jack talks about it all the time. Like you go through these stages where you're the evangelical because you found out something new and no, it's 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 been a long time. There's a lot of people before you and then you get to a point where you just want to be a resource for somebody mm -hmm. and like put your shit out there, not in an aggressive way. Like people are free to listen to my shit if they want or turn it off or not listen to it or run it down. I don't really care like anyway. Uh, but yeah, if they reach out to me and say, well, what are your opinions? I'll tell them. And you, you gotta be prepared to hear it too, mm -hmm. because I don't, I don't try to put anything. I don't try to put rose colored glasses on shit or um, try to make you feel better about what you think. Like, I don't care what you think you're allowed to think whatever you want. I'll just tell you what I think, and then you can make your decision if you want to stay with what you're doing or maybe change a little bit. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that uh, I can't take those glasses off anymore. I'm to a right. point where, like you said, it's right. It, it's it's a delicate beginning where people start seeing things and they're like, huh. And they can either pull on that string or just cut it off and trim it off and go back to just being what it is. But once you pull that one string, that shit falls apart, man. Like, mm -hmm. and the more strings you pull, and I've got to a point where I don't even look anymore. Like, I just, I know it's all fucking bullshit across the board. Yeah, It's all tied together and I can't do anything about it. But what I can do is get my camper ready and meet a bunch of people that, that think similarly enough that I feel comfortable around them. And meet those people, build networks, find some place to uh, take care of myself and take care of my wife and whatever animals we have. And just forget about it. Like, control what I can and just ignore it and laugh at it. Like you said, it is funny. And it's so, it's so asinine, the stuff that comes out of it, that you're just like, what, really? Really? Yeah. Really? How can you say that? Like, 
he, I questioned my sanity for a long time during the whole COVID shit. Um, Same. That people were like saying stuff, and I'm like, wait, 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 what? Or like my wife, I think I mentioned it before that that uh, on the day that she she pulled up the COVID report, she works for a hospital. She doesn't go mm-hmm. in anymore. She's fully remote. But she has to follow all the, or she gets all the news uh, updates and all that shit and policy updates. And like she got a, a report that said there was one, one COVID positive patient in the hospital, one in the whole hospital. This is in the suburbs of Minneapolis. It's not like a rural hospital with twenty people in it. It's like a fucking suburban hospital. One person. And on the same day, she got a notice that now people that got the the vaccine um, uh, uh, waiver she did have to wear a mask and a face shield what you have one patient in the fucking hospital and you're going from a mask which is absolutely stupid to a mask and a face shield like yep. it just doesn't make any sense like how how can a logical person and i really wonder it made me really question some people that i had respect for that i thought were kind of like intelligent people right. when you talk to them and they say it and you're just like, dude, what? Really? How I like I thought you could like, especially in my career, like you work with people that are problem solvers. Like we're technicians, we're figuring shit out. Like you can think think stuff through and troubleshoot stuff. And mm-hmm. the stuff that I would hear out of them, it's like, are you not it just goes in and it just sticks in there? You don't think about all the stuff like that? Or is it just your work that you think like that? Like, cause my brain's always trying to figure shit out. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, man. Dude, it's really funny when people, you know, they're like tuned into the news, like up to a hundred when <laughs> you're talking to them about something and they'll can like contradict themselves, like within the same breath. Oh yeah. Like it's like they're, oh. they're so close. <laughs> but get there. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like, good for picking at them, like getting them, egging them on, and pushing them in different directions. Because, like, sure. I know you can tell the political affiliation of whoever you're talking to, especially when they're switched on to the news, and you just like hear that first talking point, and you're like, oh, yep, Fox guy, oh, uh, uh, MSNBC guy, and then I'm so in the middle and kind of checked out, but I, I keep it on my radar enough just so I can interact with people because otherwise. What do I like? I'm in the public eye. Once, once I'm in the private world of kind of homesteading and that type of community, I'll just switch totally off. But right now, I have to interact with people, so I gotta mm. kind of know something going on. Um, yeah, I just, I just pick those strings. Like they yep. start going down their line, and I'll just casual comment just to throw them for a loop, and they just kind of what. And then just keep going, plowing straight ahead. And like, I'm just trying to get them to maybe have a fucking connection in their head and go, huh, maybe I should look into this. They're not trying to change hearts and minds. I'm just trying to maybe have a little flash of a light bulb, even if it burns right out. (laughs) Sure. And if you, that's why I got to have the attitude of everything's funny. Because if you don't have like a positive at least like amused attitude to, like this shit will like, you know, it'll crack you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you gotta have that attitude of like, <laughs> I was very sucks, angry but in this a is bad funny. way for, for quite a while. Uh, yeah, when I kind of easy. red pilled. That's easy yeah. to fall into a hundred percent. Very angry. I felt, uh, I felt um, lied to and kind of manipulated and violated and all down the board were all these weird emotions that like yeah i was like what the fuck and then i'm like am i am i making it up in my head like am i crazy have i fucking lost my mind because this is just this is too much Mm -hmm. all at once and then as i kind of just stepped back and i was like okay calm down it's not it isn't personal they didn't target me to fuck my world up it's everybody. So, okay, stop being full of yourself and look and look at the big picture and figure out what you can do about it now that exactly. you're like, I don't want to participate. So, yeah, I did go through quite a, and that was probably like six months or a year, I would guess, 
where I was just like angry at everything. And then I would see something else. Like we started in with like the, the big pharma and some, some scripts that Corey was on and stuff like right, that. Yeah. And then food and down the line. And as every, all those dominoes started to fall, I just get angrier and angrier. How could they fucking do this to people? How could they fucking do this to people? And then I'm like, they're going to keep doing it. So I might as well just figure out how to be me and not deal with it. <laughs> yup. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Like, uh, I got shit to do today. You got shit to do today. Yep. Absolutely. I'm going to tear apart my, uh, water filtration system and redo it. So that's, yeah, I got all the parts. <laughs> I, I got the <laughs> content to do and, uh, cleaning and, and yeah ramping shit up but we kind of come up here on a half hour and a half um you want to tell people where they can find you where they can check you out um i have your links in the show notes but uh shout it out there tell them where what you got going on what you got coming up uh where they can find you and and what to look for yeah so you can go to farmhoplife.com i just redid the homepage this morning to make it look look nice uh and so you can you can find us like more about us there um link to link to the youtube i do have a uh a request for people if they could subscribe to my youtube so i hit that 300 subscribers so it automatically uploads to odyssey that would be awesome because that is that is a pain to do manually i actually stopped because like one upload would take like a day and a half or something so uh Mm -hmm. if please you can I don't even care if you don't like have me if you don't if you don't watch my videos fine like please just help me get my stuff backed up uh somewhere where, else I, where I are you at that. right now how many are you at right now like 60 I think ah oh, yeah we'll push it we'll get there. that would be awesome I, I really appreciate that I got uh, I so. do I do a week worth of well four days worth of promo after this so yeah I'll push it I mean my whole huge audience I'll get you a couple. <laughs> we'll get you I up appreciate to that. <laughs> I take it. It's closer. It's yeah, closer. I hear you. I'm struggling with those those YouTube numbers too. We're pushing to that next. Like the I signed up for Odyssey long enough ago that they uh, just automatically did it. It didn't matter what you oh, had. Nice. Like you could just turn it on, and then uh, yeah, just kind of grandfathered in. So that was cool. But yeah, we're pushing that, looking for that thousand, and we're at. 570 and i'm like looking at that holy shit it took this long to get to 570 i got half as far to go so right. i definitely get that youtube uh, come on really i don't even need you to watch just just be that subscriber <laughs> yeah Jeez, turn off that notifications one. that's fine i will not bother you if you don't want me to i'm not gonna say hit that bell oh yeah yeah so youtube float you're a float guy right yep i'm on there a little bit um i got a podcast i'm active on twitter and instagram me we uh all the all the good stuff I actually i'm on tiktok a little bit too so i signed um, up <laughs> I, I just can't get into it i mean Corey it's a good time website. suck it's a we just, once they figure out your little algorithm it's a awesome time suck like they yeah. got that da- nailed down to where they will take up your whole day if they if you let them <laughs> Weird. Last night, uh, Corey and I were, uh, it was kind of like Friday night. We got the camper slides open and it was kind of crappy weather and we had some dinner. We're like, let's just chill for tonight because this weekend is just going to be stupid busy. And I think we watched TikTok for three hours <laughs> on her phone. Like I wasn't yeah. even watching it. <laughs> she, excuse me. She had her phone over in her chair and I'm sitting kind of next to her and she'd be like, check this one out and turn her phone and then it kept getting more and more and more that she would turn her phone because i think they were dialing it in Mm -hmm. and after about all of a sudden i look up the clock i'm like what the fuck (laughs) it's just i felt dirty i was like oh i gotta work extra hard this weekend because that was just that was stupid i feel dumber but there is there's some useful information on there like there's definitely people that you can learn from that you can laugh about laugh with Mm -hmm. uh but yeah it's just that teeter-totter getting sucked in for way too long (laughs) yeah i did want to mention at the end of the show here it's uh you talk about like you know working hard and create like you it's very obvious how like well you prepare for these things um and you know to be able to produce like a good show like it's it's quite noticeable so i 
Like, I, I hope to be that. as good as you and in, in getting <laughs> like being prepared for this. And, you know, my outros just absolutely suck. I never know what to say. Like, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I have it written down. Like, me too. I and finally, I still suck I just, at it. Yeah. I just finally wrote it down. And I'm like, it's the same thing every time. But you know what? It's consistent because otherwise I just stumble. Like, our videos, when we first started making videos uh, for the homestead, you get to the end and I'm like, okay, well, see ya or <laughs> yep. hey have a good day or like yeah. so it's so awkward and half the time i'd end up just cutting the video off before i said it so it just didn't sound stupid and it would just end <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, much better yeah oh god it's it's tough it's tough for sure but uh i definitely appreciate that you you do fine man you do thanks you do you and that's that's kind of where i worried about it for two years like back and forth like i didn't have the internet to do it so like there i do have that excuse but it was more of um what are people gonna f what are people gonna think and now i just don't care <laughs> i just do i do me if i get if i got a hundred people that want to watch it fine if i get a thousand people if i get five thousand people like whatever i'm just kind of putting it out there um you're doing people a favor like you never know you never know that one person that listens to you that makes a change in their life so if it's one person it's it's one person. That's cool. It's worth I'm it. Good with that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, for you, it's, it's me. So you got that going for you. I got my one. I got, got my one. one. I'm yeah. good. I'm good. No, but Shutter yeah, down. man, I definitely appreciate you coming on and uh, yeah, I, I'd love to come on chat with you on your show too. And uh, we'll, de we'll definitely keep, uh, keep that uh, collab thing in mind. Uh, yeah when i hit the road or even even before we do man let's uh let's figure out shit and and people that want to do this like I, there's got to be more than us like we didn't just Absolutely. randomly meet each other as the only two people in this country that want to do this <laughs> like, right like I don't, uh, I don't what's their names uh oh scott I, I thought i had it in my notes scott and nicole i think oh yeah yep yep, yep. Yeah. So, all right, man. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap it up here. I'll, I'm going to, I'll, I'll drop you off. I'll close up the show. And then if you want to hang out for a few minutes, I'll catch up with you and, uh, and let you know when I get you the links and everything. So I definitely yeah, appreciate you being on and uh, everybody should go check out Matt at farm hop life. And uh, yeah, let's get those uh, YouTube numbers up to over 300. So <laughs> hey, Matt, it's been great. And uh, if you want to sign off and then I'll, and I'll drop you off, close this up. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate being here. All right, thank you. All right, yeah, what a great chat with Matt. Uh, when we started talking, and I realized, and I put it all together, that we were pretty much on the same path. I was super excited that he wanted to come on and and chat. And yeah, I really enjoyed talking to him, and look forward to get on his show. Definitely go check out his stuff. Subscribe, follow him on Float. Um, yeah. I'm digging Comfrey tomorrow, so uh, he wants to get in on that order. Get it in by uh, midday tomorrow. Uh, crypto, crypto, send me a direct message. We'll get you taken care of. Uh, otherwise, you can put it in on the website. And we do take cryptocurrency on the website with a 10% discount. Uh, just when you pick your payment method, use cryptocurrency checkout, and that'll automatically come off. Uh, pick up some coffee, uh, clothes, yoga mats, all sorts of stuff, cool T-shirts, hoodies, uh, sayings on the back. Go check them out. See if there's something you want. Uh, I am going to be putting up some uh, some package deals for the coffee uh, for going into the holiday season um, with Father's Day, Mother's Day. Might be a little late for Mother's Day at this moment, but uh, I might do Father's Day sale. We'll see. But uh, getting started packages, I think I might do a, a package of some coffee and a grinder or coffee and a French press for those that uh, are uninitiated into the good coffee world. Uh kind of a little starter pack but anyway it's been a great morning i really appreciated matt being on we'll wrap up here get busy uh check out uh keep an eye out for that video uh walk around of getting back into the camper that i will probably be shooting in the next uh, half hour or so and uh, get it up this weekend and yeah catch up with you on monday as always you can find me at the lost project.com on float float uh, let me see. God damn it. Every time I click on that, I lose my notes. And like Matt and I said, I got to uh, I got to have it written down to close it out. Right. But you can find me at the lost float, Twitch, Telegram, YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, Gab, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Fountain FM to uh, to do that value for value exchange. 
I really appreciate you hanging out with us this morning and we'll catch back up with you on Monday.